Hey guys, so I uh, received another toy to play with, and I thought I would try it out in the real world, you know, you know, sort of a practical situation. So what you see here is the Creality Ferret Pro 3D Scanner, and it is scanning the part here that is light brown, and I'll show what that is later in the video. Now the cone shape thing is, is to lift it up, but it also serves as a tracking reference for the scanner. Now I've been playing around with this thing for a while, and the biggest frustration with these things is that they lose tracking. And especially with this one, it, it seems to want to lose it as it goes around corners, especially like a sharp edge of this piece. After a bunch of experimenting, uh, this seems to be a good solution. And with this setup, I can scan the whole item as it turns and not have to scan part of it and combine parts in an editor later, uh, which is, you know, can be a bit fickle to do. So, all right, so here's what it looks like in the software. Now, it's important to note that this is the latest update of the Creality Scan software, and it works much better than the, the one that was out when I got the scanner. And you can see the results here. They're, they're not perfect, but they're pretty close. And for this print, they're gonna be just fine. Now, once we get all around the part, I will, I'll lift the scanner to get a bit more of the points on the top. And, and you can use this handheld too, uh, but for a small part like this, it takes a bit of a steady hand. It's just got kind of a narrow field of view. So it's real easy to, to just kind of move just a little bit too far and then you, know, you, you, you lose the tracking. But then once we get enough points, uh, we can let the software convert the parts to a to a mesh. And you can see here that this is this is pretty close. This is not perfect. It looks really good when you put the skin on it, when you put like the the uh, the coloring and whatnot in it. Uh, but if you look at just the part without the coloring, you can tell there's some problems. But uh, it's it's pretty close. I think it's going to be just fine. So all I need to do now is just tell the software to make it solid, and then we'll take it into an editor. So I use Mesh Mixer for this, which is free. And uh, it's fairly easy to use. It's actually it's actually the same thing that's in Fusion 360 now. Uh, it's just a separate program. I actually find the, this old program a little easier to use than the integration that they had in uh, Fusion 360. In Mesh Mixer, I will uh, cut off the piece I don't want and uh, do a little cosmetic cleanup. Nothing, nothing major here. Just kind of smooth some areas. And I'll save it in STL, which is just a mesh file. It just saves the information and I'll take it straight into the slicing software for my 3D printer. So after scanning and printing, I have a part. And here it is beside the original. Uh, the, the part I printed is in gray. And uh, you can tell we lost a little original detail, uh, but dimensionally and functionally, it's pretty much spot on. So uh, let's go uh, find out what it is and give it a test. So what this is is a piece of this plastic shed that I recently put up. I actually moved this shed from another location and um, I lost one of the original pieces. And I could have just made some makeshift piece to stuff in this hole because literally the purpose of this thing is to fill a hole. So here we recreated a functional part. It's not a huge thing. It's not something that's, you know, thousands of dollars. It's pennies. But uh, we have basically uh, the equivalent of an original part. So I started this video off just kind of showing you exactly what I did to make something with this product. And I'm, I did that on purpose because obviously when you're doing these sorts of reviews, it's, it's much more interesting seeing what it could actually do than, than seeing, you know, than talking about it first and then saying, oh, and it can do this. This product is, was kind of vexing to me. Um, I have gotten some successes out of it and I've gotten a lot of failures out of it. It's very, it's very frustrating, but I think a lot of the frustration is more about the software than it is about the product itself and I'll, I'll explain that as I go along here but let me just show you quickly what comes with these with these 3d scanners so here's what comes in the package on this side of course you got all your different connecting wires and stuff but the real meat of it is right here you have your for lack of a better term uh, scanning head I guess would be what this is and I'm not well versed in exactly how this works, so I'm, I'm not going to talk about that too much. Uh, there's plenty of other videos explaining how 3D scanning works. You have a Wi-Fi transmitter, which you can use with your phone. I have not tried it with the computer yet. I prefer corded, if possible, going into with these sorts of things because there's just a lot of data moving through them. So uh, I did try out the Wi-Fi sensor with my phone. It did work. I don't like using this thing on the phone. I think the phone software is garbage, or the phone app is, is just garbage. Uh, I have not had any luck with it whatsoever. The software that comes on the computer, much more success with, especially, now 
realize I got this almost two months ago. They've updated the software since I've got this. When I first started using it with the old software, it was, again, it was almost unusable. It would just, it would lose tracking constantly. The new software is better. Uh, using those targeting dots like you saw on there, that's what those little round things are in, in, the, um, in the scan. Those helped immensely. Um, and a lot of it is learning how to move around your scan, basically. You're, 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 trying to, you're trying to get it to go around corners and things, and that's the thing I had the most difficulty with, was going around an edge. For instance, let's take this thing. If you were trying to scan this, and you were, tr you were coming like this, and you're scanning here, and then all of a sudden you get to this edge, and it just gets lost. Just completely lost. Even though there's a little bit over here, it just, it just gets lost. And what information does appear there is kind of a jumble. It's just not sure what to do with that real thin edge. And I had that problem with a lot of different things that I was trying to scan. I solved it a little bit by kind of going real slow and kind of backing up and going forward and backing up and going forward. That gets awfully frustrating as you get used to it and, and with the new software that I downloaded, it's a lot better. Let's just put it that way. Also in the box, come you comes with a power handle. That would be. That's also you put the tripod on the bottom of it. That's how I had it on the tripod in the um, in the video. Uh, it works great. I mean, it powers the Wi-Fi and the camera if you're using it with your phone. Uh, you can also connect directly to your phone with a cord. I had no problems whatsoever with it connecting and, and, and seeing the, the, uh, the, the scanner. My problem was with, I really believe it's, it's app or software related. And of course you got a little swivel head. And you actually have a connector here. You could either put this Wi-Fi thing in there or you can put your phone in there. So you could have the Wi-Fi thing. Let's just set it up real quick. So. You have your your Wi-Fi here on the back, and then you have this thing that you put your phone in. Then this thing goes on top, and you've got your other piece on top. So basically, you have a complete handheld wireless uh, scanner that you can use with a phone. Now, again, I didn't have a lot of success using the phone app. Uh, I mean, it works. It just it's too clunky and fidgety and doing this is, was did not really work for me actually handheld at all is tricky because it's very difficult to keep to keep everything in line and to keep the target focused and every time you lose the target a little bit you know it it, it wants you to stop and go back and again I had much more success setting it up with the scanner stationary and moving the object as as I showed you in the um, intro to this video where the object just kind of swivels around and the scanner is stationary and again this comes with all your cables here to connect to your phone to your computer uh, to connect the Wi-Fi to connect the power from the, the power uh, stick here and of course you've got directions and all that good stuff for little things like what I did with that little piece that is just supposed to be a a filler piece it's not really you know dimensions are important that it snaps in and it fits and it doesn't fall out but as far as looks it really doesn't matter that much as far as surface looks and that kind of thing really doesn't matter um, obviously I could have taken a piece of wood and, and spent you know 15 minutes carving up a piece of wood to snap in there or glue in there or whatever um, this was a little bit more fun obviously uh, once I got it working but for that sort of thing, I think it might be actually pretty useful. It's more meant for a hobbyist to, to play around with and to learn how to use these scanners because um, at the price point it's at, it's a lot cheaper than most of the scanners that are out there. And I think that's its big selling point is that it's a good entry level scanner for a hobbyist or someone who's interested in just making some, some, some things you know, to do. For um, if you want to scan your face, it's perfect for that. It doesn't like beards though. It absolutely cuts the chin off. Uh -huh. 
because it just doesn't know what to do with the beard. Now I do understand that there's some sprays and things that you can get that will help it to identify uh, areas like your beard that it's sort of translucent but not and you know it's it just don't like picking up those hairs. I really believe that as I think the software is going to get better I know that they've already released a couple different versions of the software and I think the software is getting better. I think that they're taking the reviews that they've gotten so far and they're trying to make the software work with the, the scanner better. The software also has a couple features like cutting off pieces and doing that kind of thing. I prefer to do all that stuff in mis mesh mixer uh, which is just a lot faster on my computer and and you know my computer's it's pretty specced out. I mean I have no problem running fusion uh, big models in fusion I have no problem with. So I think once they get the software sorted out, I think this is going to be pretty, pretty damn cool. Um, and it also already is pretty cool to imagine something that you can scan something, scan a 3D object and print it. It's, you know, it's pretty cool tech to me. All right, guys, I appreciate you watching. See you next time.